make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. I'll be showing you how to do all kinds of things. I'm gonna be trying to take these ta tabs off of this lid so I can make my uh, foundry furnace because I want to take this handle off because I'm going to be making a hole in the middle for a vent. There we go. I'm going to use this hole saw to cut into this uh, furnace so I can put this burner in at an angle so the, so the uh, heat can travel around in kind of a cyclonic fashion around the crucible and it'll immediate it'll go out the vent in the top of this so I'm doing that with a hole saw um, I've drawn the, the hole I, I put a little pilot bit hole here in the middle so this this guy has somewhere to purchase I turned the uh, speed down on this Ryobi drill um, down to one because we're going through metal and I, I just don't want to burn burn it up with this whole saw. We don't want to cut into the, uh, the insulation too far. I'm going to do that with that uh, utility knife. So uh, we just don't want to dig it all out. So now I'm going to try to cut out the, the insulation for this and I'm going to just kind of do it in kind of little chunks because I don't want to, I don't want to dig too much out. Um, I just want it to be able to fit through there without um, having too much of a ga air, air gap for the uh, heat to get out. So we want it, if it, if it's a little snug, then we, when we go to push the the burner through it'll have um, this this fiber can kind of a act as a heat gasket around it so you just kind of carve some of this out in, in little increments and then pull it out and make sure you don't cut yourself on this these edges of this this metal from the hole saw I won't belabor the entire process of this. You get my drift. Just make sure you're going at the angle you need it to go. And you can go in here and probably just push, push this uh, screwdriver through at the right angle. And then it'll come, it'll pop through, and then you have an idea of where uh, where it's going to come out. And you can kind of cut from there. fabric really kind of moves out of the way quite a bit so and I'm just kind of carving away at it we just want to give the burner a chance to be able to go through it without ripping it all up so I just kind of kept digging at it and uh, now I can kind of work this slowly into the furnace and the, the get, just let the, the uh, fabric, let's see if I can get you, let the fabric kind of move around, around it and then just kind of acts as a heat gasket. So air can't, the, this hot air can't just blow out of here. For the inside portion of the mold, I am using a, a quick tube uh, form for normally for concrete. Um, I'm just going to put this Sharpie here and just kind of rotate it around. Give me the, the general height and I'm going to cut it about that height spin it around so you have a continuous line then just cut it with something like a sawzall or a, 
you can even probably just use a hacksaw. I have to compress some of this um, ceramic fiber blanket, compress it down so there's more of a, there's more space for putting the uh, refractory. But for now, um, I'm going to be putting the, the a pipe in here as a template for when I go to pour the refractory. And right now I'm just kind of marking this um, tube so I can cut with a, this hole saw. Um, it'll leave a, I'm going to cut right there and uh, then be able to put a pipe in there at an angle. So I'll show you that next. All right, I want to go at an angle, so just go slow so you don't hurt yourself. Go in, go in straight on at first, and then and then go at an angle so you make sure that you you're uh, getting it at the angle for the for the pipe. It won't look like a perfect circle because you're going at an angle. And then you just put that in here. See, and then you gotta, you're going to push this through here. And it's going to go at that angle. Like that. Because you want the swirl going around the crucible. I'm be mixing the refractory for the, uh, the furnace. I'm using this uh, stuff called... Mizzou, it's like a 55 pound bag of refractory and uh, I had a little video mishap while I was recording this so I'm kind of just going to show you what I did is I uh, I poured about this much of the Mizzou and then made a little well in the middle and uh, make sure when you're mixing this stuff to have a respirator at least an N95 but Preferably a respirator, like what I'm having here. So, because you don't want to get silicosis from all the dust from this. Um, I don't know if it's silicosis, but you don't want anything, that, you don't want this stuff in your lungs. Um, so, I put the dry material in here first, and then I added a little bit of water as I went and made it like a little well. You gotta watch because this stuff will absorb the water and start getting kind of sludgy. You want it to be more this kind of consistency and I'll show you you don't want to you don't want to add the water first you want to add the, the dry material and slowly add water you want it basically so you can make a snowball you don't want it turn into watery ooze and just dripping through your fingers so you want it so when you when you uh, mix it up it's kind of like this like a like a, a floppy snowball and you can make it even a little drier than this. This is probably a little, little too much, but I only need about this much because I'm going to be packing this in between all the fire bricks at the bottom, and uh, and I don't need a lot for that because the fire bricks take up most of the bottom. And I'm going to be packing this on top of the uh, ceramic fabric on the very bottom of the bucket because we want that as like a reflective um, material. Uh, for the big heavy fire brick Okay, so we have the bucket here and we have the fire brick we're gonna be uh, you can see the ceramic um, round disc that I put at the bottom of it and uh, I'm gonna be just packing this refractory in here And I have this like little Clob here and I'm just gonna pack it down in there like this it doesn't have to be beautiful, it just has to kind of fill in all the gaps. There. And I'll get a stick or something and I'll just kind of pack it in there. I probably didn't make enough, but I probably could use more, but I think this will be, this will be kind of eyeballed it. And I probably didn't do it perfect but I think this is gonna be pretty good and this this will probably crack and that's okay it's just kind of the the stuff that's kind of mortaring this into place this fire brick so it's not just moving around on you all the time 
so I probably was just videotaping or video recording a bunch of just ground here sorry about that so I uh, put the ceramic blanket back in try to get it all lined up again um, I'm gonna be putting this tube in too Let's see here Let's see if I can do this while I'm also trying to record this so you want to get this kind of a good a good you know nice nice inner um, distance so so it's pretty equidistant all the way around it's not going to be an exact science um, you could measure it you know here and here and here and here so you have a a, a basic um, equidistant from the the outside diameter and then we're gonna mix some more of that that uh, refractory here um, in here and then we're gonna pack it down in this and it's gonna take a bit um, and we're gonna we're gonna have it go flush with the top of this bucket so you're gonna have a nice um, flat thing I think I'm gonna do the inner the inner part first um, I'm gonna I'm gonna put it up about an inch high so um, and then I'll push this pipe through so we have so we make sure that we have enough on the bottom and then we'll cover this pipe and uh, should be able to get a pretty good uh, inner core here so I'm gonna be dumping this down here you want it to get down into this crack don't worry if you get slop stuff around a little bit that'll happen you don't have much choice you got to get it into these into here and you want it to, you want it to be down below the surface where that pipe is going to be going through and you can see it's kind of sloshing through there but that's okay we're gonna we'll, we'll figure that out um, once we get it kind of packed down once you get a decent amount down there you're gonna just kind of go around with a stick and just kind of pound this all down I have two different widths on the stick and uh, so I'm just going around making sure that I get this below below the surface you want to really pound that down because you want you want good coverage in there so you're just gonna go around and pack that down and if you get a little on the bottom just pull this out and then uh, just clean it out and pack more down. You want to get it down below that surface. And then I'll push this pipe through. My, my uh, aluminum foil is kind of coming out, but that's okay. Now I'm going to just push this through and kind of really force it through there. And I'll show you what it looks like afterwards. So I have that in there going in at the angle I kind of needed it at. I have a pretty good equidistant here. I'm going to keep packing this down. And now it'll start going over it. You'll see it gets kind of wet on the top. Um, as, you, as you're disturbing the, uh, this mixture, it's bringing all the moisture out and, it, and it's kind of making it soupier. Uh, because of the vibrations you can either t you can even take like something that makes a lot of like vibration like a, a sander and put it on the side here and just kind of it'll just keep packing that that uh and making all the bubbles and stuff rise to the top because you want to get air out of it you want to make it as compact as you can so when you pull this inner tube out it'll be nice um and set and, and uh, not have a lot of voids. Below the lip there, you want it up to the top. Okay. Okay, I mixed up enough that I think will be enough to go over the, the top of that lip. It's uh, a little bit more on this side, but next thing I'm gonna do is take this uh, multi-tool and just kind of put, put, put it up against here to vibrate up against it. in the inside too and just kind of get let it uh, work around there
you can also you can just kind of tap the sides too watch it jiggle watch this see that that's helping to get some of the air bubbles out too you can also go kind of low tech by tapping on the sides and the top as you can see it's, it's gotten a lot better and it's, it's worked in it's kind of more liquefied and and uh, a lot of that water is rising to the top now next step is basically to just let it sit and rest this side looks like it's riding a little high so it's probably not quite level so I'm gonna tip this up and and try to shim the shim this side so we can level it out a little bit more because it's it seems like it's uh, it's a little off level here you can see by the fact that it's rising over here and a little bit like just at the surface there I just did a rough kind of leveling um, gonna I took a little bit that squooched off that side and put it over here and then I leveled it and it should it should help it a little bit um, you can also you can kind of take take some of this off move it towards other areas that need it and then you just keep hitting it tap multi tools it. are great for uh, making bubbles kind of pop on the the surface of the concrete <laughs> You don't have to necessarily use a, a multi-tool. You can hit it like this. It just makes the, the cast better if you can get all the air out of the inside of it. And that vibration helps. You can use your uh, wife's electric uh, back massager or uh, you know uh, electric sander or something too. I did a pretty good job getting this uh, more or less cleaned up. Um, now the next thing I can basically do is just let this cure overnight probably 24 hours before you want to demold this definitely going to want to check it before you do that um, if there's any shrinkage you're going to probably want to put a little a little top um, layer on um, but then you're going to just kind of uh, pop this mold out of here and uh, it should be easier because it's cardboard instead of uh, I've, I've seen other people using harder material and then they end up having to cut it with something like this. Um, I don't think I'll necessarily have to do that but we will certainly see. Oh and just so you know um, I'm gonna let this cure so I'm gonna put this plastic bag over the top so it with um, it holds all its moisture in as it's uh, curing because a lot of these uh, uh, I think it's called hydrophilic um, mixtures like sort of like concrete um, they do a lot better if you can keep the moisture in um, so if you cover it with some plastic that that moisture can't evaporate and uh, it'll it'll be able to cure easier I th think uh, I let this sit overnight and kind of set up and now I can just kind of pull this cardboard tube out it's not fully cured yet so you I wouldn't use it yet but you can at least pull if it if it feels pretty hard you can pull this mold out and then you're just gonna pull this out any um, don't worry about scraping any other cardboard out of it because that'll just burn out when you bring it up the temperature worked pretty good it's got a pretty good uh, shape it didn't shrink too much so um, I have this um, wrapped in aluminum foil that way I can kind of just pull it out I think it'll work it looks like it is I hope 
I hope I'm not pulling this out too soon. And there we go. The the uh, burner will go through here. Hi. Now with the inner core of the furnace just waiting to cure. Um, I'm going to move on to this lid. And the lid, the idea here is we're going to put an inner core of ceramic fiber blanket or kale wool and then I'm, I'm going to use this livestock fencing as an inner structure where I'm going to add the castable refractory like that I used here. I'm going to pour it on the inside of this. I'm going to make a vent and put a tube through here as a mold. This is going to go on the inside, this kale wool ceramic uh, blanket. And then um, I'm going to use some nails and weld this to uh, keep that castable refractory from falling out when I turn this lid upside down as a cover for this. I'm tracing this kale wool so I can cut it out with a utility knife like I did the other uh, stuff for inside of this. And then this is going to go on the inside. I might not, I might pull this apart a little bit so it's not this thick. Um, I, I probably want it about one inch thick instead of two. And it, it is in, pretty easy to uh, delaminate it so I'm going to pull it apart and then put castable refractory on the inside with this as a structure. I'll show the steps. I'm almost through this kale wool. I'm just going to pull it out and put it in the inside of this. You can kind of pull it and delaminate it a little bit. See it comes apart pretty easily. And that's okay because we don't necessarily want the full thickness. And then that just kind of goes in there like this. Then we'll cut the hole out in the middle. I have to figure that out yet. So I'm, I made a uh, kind of a template here, I'm making this with this uh, pot. I'm going to use this as a template to kind of hold the castables and. Uh, I'm going to cut this out around there with a jigsaw with a metal blade. I'm going to drill it first so I have somewhere where to put the blade. Now I'm going to cut this out with a jigsaw with a metal cutting blade. Take your time. I. I pre-drilled this with a uh, drill bit just so I, I wouldn't have to uh, have to fight that but you want to go real slow you don't want to go too fast with this and definitely use some ear protection and eye protection with this Careful with this because you don't want to cut yourself with this metal. Now, even with cutting it with a metal cutting jigsaw, this is pretty uh, light gauge metal and it'll look pretty chewed up at places. I'm just going to trace this under the kale wool so I can cut this out with a utility knife pretty easy. We want it to be the smaller diameter so that a uh, pot will kind of hold it in place. So I cut out this inner circle of this kale wool and then put our lid here and put this here like this. 
and then the next thing we're going to do is the, the metal structure for the castable refractory. So you're going to put this down on your steel, whatever, you can use this livestock fencing or you can use hardware cloth or you can just need, or chicken wire maybe doubled up. I just happen to have this, so this is what I'm going to use, but I'm making little marks around the circumference of this. When I, when we go to lift this up, we don't want the refractory falling down into the uh, metal or the furnace. Alright, I cut this out, and this is going to form part of the structure for this uh, furnace lid. I'm probably going to cut another one out so I can um, alternate the, the pattern on here so it has a stronger structure to it. And then I'm going to cut the middle out so I can have a vent hole for it. I am uh, grinding off these uh, bolts with a diamond cutoff wheel on this uh, grinder. Um, then I'm going to be pulling up pulling this up away from the KO a little bit so you can get a mechanical capture. If you don't get a mechanical capture of the castables, it's not going to hold. So you want these to be kind of curved upward so the refractory can get between the KO and the steel so you can get a good capture. So this is what I'm talking about, a mechanical capture. I'm pulling this up so refractory can get underneath here and kind of encapsulate this so it holds better. Because when you, when you lift this up and down, you do not want the refractory falling down into the furnace and into the crucible of melted metal. I put this on a little platform so the whole can stand off so I can push this down as my mold and it'll be in there pretty nice. I'm going to fill this up with refractory up to the level point and uh, I guess just let it cure after that. So I filled this with refractory. It's not as smooth as I'd like it to be but that's okay. I got most of the bubbles out. There's a couple right here. Just going to let that cure overnight. See how it looks. Then I'll pull this part out. And uh, hopefully it works pretty well.